I always like to say that the best student athletes in the nation come from right here in the DMV. Today, we've got a very special one with us. Katie Ledecky, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Now, Katie, I'm extraordinarily familiar with the high school scene here in the DMV. I've covered high school sports for about nine or 10 years now. How did you end up at Stone Ridge? How, how did Sidwell, the Marais, not get you? I know that the recruiting battles that go on with top level student athletes here. Oh, uh, there wasn't much recruiting. It was, uh, I, I went to Little Flower School from pre K through eighth, uh, which was a great school for me. And then I went to Stone Ridge for high school. I looked at some of the schools in the area and felt like Stone Ridge was the best best fit for me academically first and foremost. And then, um, they have a great swim coach, Bob Walker, who, um, was going to be really supportive of both my high school swimming and my club international national level swimming. So it was the best fit all around. It was great. Shout out to the Gator Nation out there. Listen, 16 individual swimming world titles. I can't imagine what that had to feel like to accomplish that goal. But what I want to focus on more so is what all did it take for you to get to this level? A lot of hard work. Uh, it took a lot of hard work just to get to my first Olympics in 2012. And then my goal was to continue to make it back to international meets uh, year after year. and. I don't think I would have imagined I would have the career I, I've had back in 2012, but I'm, I'm really happy with how it's all played out and happy to continue to be going to these meets and winning gold medals for Team USA. Now, speaking to that career and the really unbelievable nature of this, I had to double check these numbers here. You have the 29 fastest times in the 800 and you have not lost since you were a teenager at the age of 15. To me, that just speaks to dominance. When you were a child, did you ever imagine that it could be like this? No, when, when I first started swimming, when I was six years old for the Palisades Porpoises in the Montgomery <laughs> County Swim League, I never imagined I would make it to the Olympics. I really did not believe that was something that was possible. I just wasn't very interested in finding out how that was possible because it just seemed so far-fetched. So. Uh, even just to make it to that level um, was incredible. Um, even making the levels right below it, like junior nationals and senior nationals, um, those were all just stepping stones. And to be able to travel the world through swimming and have all the opportunities that I've had, I, I never imagined it when I was six years old. And I wonder, because you were really kicking off the, the highlighted portion of your career again when you were just in high school out there, what was that like as a high school student to be walking through the hallways after competing on the world's biggest stages? Everyone at Stone Ridge was really supportive. Uh, my teachers, my classmates, I was hearing from all of them during the 2012 Olympics. It was just after my freshman year of high school. so. I was still making friends and finding my way uh, around high school. And then I, I come back from my sophomore year and everybody knows my name and uh, I have a little more notoriety, but um, my teachers to their credit treated me exactly the same. My classmates did as well. Um, nobody treated me differently. It was just a lot of fun to be myself and feel comfortable around my classmates, my teachers and Sometimes when I would walk through the lower school or the middle school to get to art class, I would hear all the little kids, uh, you know, saying, oh, it's Katie Ledecky, it's Katie Ledecky. Uh, but that that just made me so happy just to to hear that they were excited. And, you know, you can put a smile on someone's face just being yourself. And, um, yeah, I, I didn't take that lightly. I, I tried to always be a good role model when I was around them. But um just, just tried to be myself as much as I could. Setting the stage uh, for all of the role model activities that you do here still at this point. Now, seven gold medals, uh, 10 medals in total, I believe, is where you're sitting right now. When you look back at your early career, what about your upbringing here in the DMV, in the Washington, D.C. area, helped to set the stage and prepare you for this level of greatness? Well, I think there's there's just overall a level of excellence in the in the DMV, not just in sports or just in swimming, but 
in everything that people do in the area. Um, so many great role models and leaders, um, whether that's at schools, whether that's um, in government and business and law and um, churches, just everywhere you look, um, there's somebody leading the way and an expectation, I think, of, of excellence. So um, I, I never felt pressure or felt expectations on me, but I felt like I was surrounded by excellent people every day, whether that was at Little Flower, um, Little Flower School, Little Flower Church, or if it was at Stone Ridge um, or with my, my club team growing up, Nation's Capital Swim Club. Um, or my summer league swim team in the Palisades Porpoises. Um, everywhere I looked, there were incredible people, and I tried to rise to that standard, and I try to make them proud, and um, they've in turn been so supportive of me, and um, I'm, I'm very appreciative of all the lessons I learned growing up in, in Bethesda, just of hard work, and um, if you put in that hard work, you'll, you'll get results, and, and good things will happen. Well, speaking of being surrounded by greatness, I know that when you were a, an itty bitty child, you actually shared a moment with Michael Jordan. Yes, um, I was uh, at a, a Wizards game. Um, my my uncle was a minority owner of the Caps, and um, we were there with the Leonsis family, and they've been incredibly supportive as well over the years. And uh, I was sitting in a row right in front of Michael Jordan and he started playing peekaboo with me uh, when I was eating my popcorn and um, I just kept eating my popcorn <laughs> and uh, Zach Leonsis actually asked me like, do you know who that is? And you can see that I say Michael Jordan, um, but I didn't care. I just um, wanted to eat my popcorn and, <laughs> and watch the game and um, it's, it's hilarious. And uh, I think Michael Jordan got quite a kick out of it too. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I had even started swimming at that point. Wow. That, look, e even before the story was really written, you already had those nerves of steel. Listen, yeah. U.S. Olympic Hall of Famer Rowdy Gaines, when talking about what it is that separates you and allows for you to be different, he said that you have an incredible feel for the water, and that is something that others can't duplicate. When you think back at your time, especially, again, as a young child here in the DMV, was there a moment that the light bulb kind of went off in which you knew that you were someone who was capable of being this special? Uh, I think there were maybe a couple moments throughout my career. Um, you know, there, there are always those firsts, whether it's first time qualifying for a certain meet or a first record. Um, but I, I more so kind of remember the breakthroughs in training, um, whether that was when I was 14, 15 years old, right before that first Olympics, I had kind of a breakthrough in my technique uh, with my coach at the time, Yuri Sugiyama. Um, and then after Tokyo or after London in 2012, um, with my coach Bruce Gemmel, I think I, I really learned some new things about training and how to train and how it, if you see your progress in training, you're going to see results and progress in competition. So uh, I learned, learned a lot through, through that time leading into Rio. And I think all those lessons uh, have stuck with me through the years. And I had a really great foundation uh, from a very young age um, because I had really, really good coaches that looked after me and they, they thought about the big picture. And, you know, I think they saw, something in me that I probably saw later on in my career. And I'm, I appreciate that they believed in me and believed that I, I could achieve some big things. You spoke earlier about uh, being a role model as early as 14, 15 years old. When I look at DMV athletics, uh, especially for those on the girl side of the, of the pitch, of the field, of the pool, it's really on the uprising here in the DMV, not only from the student athletes themselves out there competing, but also the fan support of young ladies in athletics. And, and again, so when we look at yourself, when we look at everything that the WNBA is doing, uh, the United States wins, women's national team, regardless of their recent finish or not, it feels like women's athletics are on the rise. Where do you see your place in terms of being that role model and helping to set the stage for those coming after you? Uh, well, I, I try to be a role model and um, 
I think what's really cool for any swim fans out there, but really any um, DMV supporters and sports fans is that we do have some really great swimmers from the area, especially on the women's side coming up that have competed at the international level these past uh, few years. We've got Tori Husk from Virginia, uh, Arlington, Virginia, who's an incredibly great butterfly or freestyler. She's on a lot of relays. Um, there's Erin Gemmel, who's the daughter of my coach, Bruce Gemmel, sister of one of my, my training partners through high school, Andrew Gemmel. Um, and she was on the, the world championship team this, this past summer. Uh, we were on a relay together. So that was really neat because I've known her since she was seven. She went to Stone Ridge as well. Um, and then there's Phoebe Bacon, who I've also known since she was five years old uh, from Little Flower and Stone Ridge um, and, and Nation's Capital Swim Club. So um, it's it's going to be really special over the years, over the next couple of years, hopefully in Paris. Hopefully we'll all be on that team. And um, there are a lot of great swimmers in the DMV. And I think that's just an incredible thing. It's been like that for a while, but um, really to see the women's team starting to be dominated by some DMV athletes. It's pretty <laughs> exciting. So, um, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of pride in, in representing Maryland, uh, and, and the DMV area when we go off and compete internationally for team USA. DMV girls sports absolutely on the rise. And again, uh, you have laid a lot of groundwork for those things there. Uh, this brings up another interesting point, and, and this is whether we're talking about high school athletics, uh, youth athletics, or even at the collegiate level. There's been a lot of talk on both sides in terms of uh, transgender athletes competing and the effect that it has particularly on girls sports. I wonder with everything that you've done, everything that you've accomplished, what are your views on the transgender ath athletics and the competing in both boys and girls sports? Uh, well, World Athletics, our governing body for swimming, has come out with their guidelines. And so that's what, what we're all following now. And uh, as a current athlete, I'm very focused on my own lane and competing against the people next to me. And then moving forward, you are, of course, going to be headed towards your fourth Olympics uh, coming up next year. That has got to be an extraordinarily exciting time. I want to know kind of what your thoughts are, again, because you are no stranger to this. So what are your thoughts on your fourth Olympics? And then when it's all said and done, what legacy do you hope to leave? Well, I'm, I'm really excited about Paris, and I, I first have to get through our Olympic trials in, in Indianapolis in June. So, um, you know, swimming in the United States is incredibly tough and I have a lot of big goals for Paris. And so I, I want to be there. I want to experience another Olympics. And, uh, it's a really, really special opportunity to come together as team USA, come together as the world and, um, just show our, our skills, show our hard training and, I want to keep competing. I'm, I'm not going to be done in Paris. I know that. Um, LA 2028 is just around the corner and I'll be 31 then, but I, I love swimming. I love the training and, um, you know, I, I can definitely see myself competing in 2028 as well. That is outstanding. I tell you what, Katie, the term goat is thrown around uh, here and there nowadays, but for you, it certainly applies. Thank you so very much for stopping by here with us Thank today. Thank you. Thanks so much. And I, I wanted to ask for a happy birthday shout out. K Katie, is it possible? Can, can you say happy birthday to Allie? She's a swimmer sure. here. Girl, young sure. lady swimmer. All right. And Happy birthday, Allie. There you go. I hope you have a great day. Perfect. Katie, right. thank you so very much for your time. We, we really, really appreciate yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.